Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to talk about another two properties of group homomorphism. Last day we talked about one property which says that if we have one group G, so in the last day we talk about one property, if we have a group G and we have another group G dash, then it says the identity elements of the group G always map to the identity elements of the group g dash and this is how the mapping is defined so for any homomorphism we have that the identity elements of the group g always goes to the identity elements of the group g dash so basically what is e g dash so e g will be e g dash so that is the first property of any group homomorphism which map the elements of the group g to the elements of the group g dash here we have another two properties so this is uh, property 2 and this is property 3 so let's first talk about the property 2 so first of all let me erase this part and then we can talk about the properties so here we have the first property which says that so here is the property number one it says that if we have so suppose we have a group g and we have another group g dash now it says that for all a belongs to g so for example let me take one element a over here so here we take one element a in the group g now we can transfer to a this elements is transferred to the element so why this mapping phi by this homomorphism is goes to the value phi of a which is an elements in the group g dash now it says that the inverse of that phi of a so inverse of these elements so here you can see that the inverse of phi of a so phi of a whole inverse is basically the inverse if i have the inverse of these elements a inverse and if we transfer these elements then this is the same with the inverse of phi of a so let me again repeat that so we have an element a this goes to the by this mapping phi to phi of a and then it says that the inverse of these elements so inverse of the transfer elements is same with the inverse if i take the inverse of the elements so if i take the inverse of the elements a we get a inverse then we transfer with it so what we get we get phi of a inverse so after if i take the inverse so then this inverse so phi of a whole inverse is basically same with phi of a inverse so that is the first property over here we have to prove so let's prove this property i think you understand what is the set so here we have an element a which transport to the elements phi of a and here we have taking the inverse so here in this way we take the inverse inverse of a and now we transfer the inverse element so we get phi of a inverse which is same as if we trans inverse take the inverse of phi of a so you can see that phi of a whole inverse is phi of a whole inverse so in this way the mapping for any homomorphism this property is true so let's prove that property okay first of all let me erase this part So here we go. So proof. So because we have to prove for all a, so just let me take an arbitrary a. So let a belongs to Z. Now what we know from there? So what we have to do? We have to find the inverse of the elements phi of a. So this is the process we have to follow. Then what we can write? Then what we know? a composed with a inverse will get the identity elements of the group g now now what we can write now phi of g phi of eg the identity elements can be written as because eg is a in composed a inverse so we just put the value what we get we get a composed a inverse now because phi is an homomorphism so remember that for a homomorphism if we have two elements a and b then it goes to the phi of a star phi of b so in this case also here we can write phi of a composed with so here is the composition of g dash which is phi of a inverse 
okay now what we know from the first results from the first results we know that phi of eg is basically the eg dash which is the identity elements of the group the identity identity elements which is the identity elements of the group g dash so we just put that value therefore what we have from here from here so from one what we can write from one we can write that phi of a composed with phi of a inverse this gives us the identity elements of the group g dash now what again so similarly similarly instead of a composed a inverse what we can so uh, just left it over here uh, just leave it over it over here just remember this part now go again so similarly in this way so similarly what we can do so similarly basically okay let me uh, put that over there and similarly what we can do basically similarly now let me change the color so change let me change the color uh, it's to the okay so let me take green one so in green one what we know now again what we can write now we can write a composition a also can be written as the eg because the eg is the identity elements now take the homomorphism so what we have eg is equals to phi of a inverse composition a which is same with because phi is an homomorphism so we can write in this way and because phi of eg is eg dash so from there from this two from two what we have from two we have that phi of a inverse star phi of a which is eg dash which is the identity elements so eg dash is phi of eg basically so phi of e we just replace phi of eg by eg dash because phi of eg is eg dash that form the property one or also you can watch it on my last video uh, so this is phi of a inverse so now look over here here what we get we get an elements phi of a inverse with composition with phi of a we get the identity elements and also phi of a composition with same elements we get the eg dash so here we have always have this uh, elements phi of a and we were here also we have these elements from the group property of the group this this conclude from this we can conclude that the inverse of these elements is inverse of phi of a so inverse of the elements phi of a is basically phi of a inverse so if you forget about why this is true let me recall for you let me recall for you so let me recall a are uh, elements so and elements b is an inverse b is inverse inverse of an element c if we can write b composed with c we get the identity elements and c composed with b we get the identity element then we'll say that b is the inverse of c so here you can see that uh, that b is here if you compare with this so if you compare with that equation so compare with this with that these two so here b is our this one and c is our this one and now you can see that b compose star c is the identity elements and here also c uh, star b is the identity element so that's why the inverse so in this case what we can write we can write this uh, c inverse equals to b the inverse of c is equals to b so similarly what we write we write a phi of a whole inverse equals to the b which is phi of b inverse so i think this is clear to all of you just pause the video and repeat that uh, video again i think we repeat this video you can understand that part if you not we can discuss in our online doubt uh, doubt clearation class okay thank you so let's talk about the next property next property here we go so what's the next po property or the property three it says 
so so first of all let me erase this part yeah let's go in this way yeah i'm taking a few minutes for to erase these all parts but i have to go through all this process so here we go have if a is an element of the group g then it says that if i take compose a n time so we get a to the power n and if i transport this element so let me talk about this over here so here we have the group g and here we have an elements a and now we have g dash over here so a is transferred to the elements phi of a so this is the mapping phi so this goes to phi of a now what it says here we says that if i have a and take composition a for n times and then transport this value so after composition we get another elements of g so after that we suppose we get a to the power n over here then transport this map so from a after the composition we get a to the power n then transport it what we get we get phi of a to the power n now it says that if we transfer the a first we get phi of a and take the composition phi a same number of times so here we take the n number of times composition so similarly if we take the n times composition phi a then we get the same result so after n time composition we get phi of a whole to the power n so that gives the same result so first we have an element a we take a n times so we get a to the power n then transfer it we get phi of a to the power n and now in the other direction in the other hand if we transfer a with the phi we, of, we get phi of a then take the n times phi of a so n times phi of a we get phi of uh, a whole to the power n in this way phi of a to the power n is same with phi of a whole to the power n so that gives the for any homomorphism we have always satisfied this result one more thing i want to clear for you so a to the power n is not the multiplication a to the power n means we are taking the composition of a n times so instead if we have a group g with addition so if we write in additive notation the instead of a to the power n we write n a basically which means we are taking a n times if in the additive notation notation group we write so for example when we have a group z plus or some z n plus on that group we use the additive notation on that case we write n of a so in that case the results will be what we can write for that additive group so for the additive group the notation we can use for this so let me write that notations for additive group so here we go so for additive group for additive group additive group suppose we have additive group g plus some plus and either either be so so g d dash plus also over here so what we can write over there on that case we can write phi of n a so we are taking composition n times which is same with uh, n into phi of a so after the composition we are taking phi of a n times this gives the this type of results we can use this notation when we are talking about the additive group when in general we write in this way that phi of a to the power n which means we are taking composition a n times is same as phi of a whole to the power n n being a, is an integer n being an integer so let's give it a proof so what we're going to do we're going to use the mathematical induction the principle of mathematical induction to prove these results so what we're going to do so what you basically do over here so we have to do it in three steps basically so here we have step one in step one we talk about in step one so suppose n is the zero n is the integer zero then what about a to the power n so a to the power n means a to the power zero which is the identity elements okay 
so in that case phi of a to the power n means phi of the identity elements good so what happened in this side in that side phi of a whole to the power n means phi of a whole to the power 0 so 0 means the identity elements because phi of a is an element in the group g dash so phi of a whole to the power 0 is the identity of elements g dash so we know from our first result that phi of e g equals to e g dash from the first property of group homomorphism so from there so we can write for n equals to 0 so it's we can write over here that this is true so for we just put the value of e g dash over here this is true when n equals to 0 so the result is true for n equals to 0 so that is the step 1 or the case 1 we can write basically on instead of step 1 write the case 1 that will be the more appropriate words for there so let's talk about now take n is any positive number so let's take n be a positive number so here we have to go through this process so let me take so here we go case 2 what we going to do we take n is a positive n is a positive integers so in that case what happened if i take n equals to 1 so n for n equals to 1 we have in the in this section a to the power 1 which is phi of a and we can write phi of a whole to the power 1 so for n equals to 1 this result is true you can see that if we put n equals to 1 we get a to the power 1 which is phi of a we can write phi of a whole to the power 1 here also we put n equals to 1 so the results the, the statement basically the statement is true for n equals to 1 so this is the first step of induction so step 1 for the induction so the result is true for n equals to 1 so we assume so step 2 we assume assume the result is true for the result is true for is true for n equals to uh, m are positive numbers n we are assuming that this is true for n equals to m now what we have to show so that means what happens that means if i put n equals to m the results is still true which means phi of a to the power m is equals to phi of a whole to the power m so this results is true so this is the this statement is true so what the next step of induction next step we have to show that the still the result hold for n equals to m plus 1 so let's check so what happened if I take n equals to so for n equals to m plus 1 what we have in the left hand side so left hand side means I am talking about this side this that is what I call the left hand side so in the left hand side we can write phi of we just put n equals to m plus 1 so phi of a to the power m plus 1 so we can write phi of a to the power m composition with a this is the property of the induction law of group for the group uh, so phi of a. now phi is an homomorphism so we can write phi of a to the power m uh, composition so here is the composition star with phi of a this is the composition in the group g dash so now we assume that phi of a to the power m is a to the power a phi of a whole to the power m so we put that value so we put that value what we have phi of a basically phi of a whole to the power m star phi of a so that is basically so from there here from there we can write so from here basically so let me write over there so from here what we can write from here we can write uh, phi of a to the power m plus 1 basically equals to phi of a whole to the power so here we have a m and here we have 1 so this will be m plus 1 so the results is true you can see that if i put n equals to m plus 1 we here we get a to the power m plus 1 equals to phi of a whole to the power m, m plus 1 so the results is true for 
n equals to m plus 1 they thus by the principle of induction so let me write that down thus by the principle of induction let me write that down I hope that you have understood uh, this part or uh, the way I am proving all this thing. So, your this is proof are in your exam may become may come in your exam. So here we go. So by principle of induction, by principle principle of induction induction uh, the results the Rajal is true for n equal uh, for all n greater than one. So all n greater than equals to one. This Rajal is true for all positive integers greater than or equals to one. Okay. So next step, the, let's talk about the next step. What are we going to do in our next step? So next step, we talk about so that the results for true for n equals to zero. Uh, the results is true for any positive integers. Now what are we going to do? Let's in case three, we are going to take n is a negative integers. So n being a negative number. So being being a negative being a negative integer so we are talking about a negative integers so because n is a negative integer what we can write we can write n equals to minus m so m where m is in positive numbers so where m is a positive number positive number so what that means suppose n equals to minus 5 so what is our m over here so m is here is 5 suppose n equals to minus 20 what is m over here m is 20 over here so in this way when n being a negative integer so it's a minus into minus into some positive number so we can write in that way so in that case what we can write basically so we can write phi of a to the power n equals to phi of a to the power minus m so a to the power minus m form the law of indices for group we can write I think you remember that part that phi a to the power minus m is same as a to the power a inverse whole to the power m I think you understand uh, you remember these results so we just going to use that results so from that results we can write a to the power minus 1 whole to the power m and whole of that now from because m is a positive numbers so we saw that for any positive number and any and uh, integers or any elements of g we can take outside of m so we can write uh, from case 2 basically from case 2 we can write a to the power minus 1 whole to the power m due to so due to m is a positive number and case from case 2 from case two why because m is in positive numbers and a inverse is an elements of g and we see we have so we have already uh, proved that for any positive integers uh, any positive integers m n we can use the results so we can use the results this results is true for already you have proved that this result is true for any positive integers n and any element a of g so because a inverse ele element of g we can use this results so this will be phi of a inverse whole to the power m so now what we know that again we are going to use the results to now use this results phi of a inverse is phi of a whole inverse so use the results to we can write phi of a whole to the power minus 1 and then whole to the power m so use the results to use results 2 we can write phi of a inverse whole to the power phi of a whole inverse so because now it the here is a minus and m so we can also use the previous results so from there we can write basically phi of a whole to the power minus m and which is basically phi of a whole to the power n so this result is also true for any negative integers so you can see that the this results is true for any positive integers n 
So, that is why we can write for any uh, positive integers n the this with this radius 2 hold over here. So, if you have a confusion over there how I write minus 1 whole to the power m equals to phi of a whole to the power minus m. So, let me again we I actually again we use this results again over here. What we do basically? So, we can write a to the power minus m equals to minus m basically. So, again use this results for phi of a. So, phi of a whole inverse. So, you can see over here. So, here a is instead of a what we going to use over here. So, instead of a let me write. So, what this results mean? Suppose we have an element something look like this. So, suppose this is an element some group. So, this says that if we have these elements and is inverse and whole to the power m which is same as minus m. So, here in this example in this example this fish luck in picture is basically our phi of a basically now you can put that value phi of a then you can see that it is true so this is true for all elements of g and that's why all elements of g on a for any group so g here we have a g dash so same type of results is because g dash is a group so for this type of results also hold for the group g dash so we can write in this way I think uh, you do not have confusion regarding this part. If you have, then you can ask me uh, by any communication means you have uh, you have available in this situation. So I hope you will come back in my next lecture and thank you for watching.